Welcome back to another installment of Santino's Sunday Cigar Review. And back by audience popular demand, Baxter is here with us. I'm Mike. I'm Mark. I'm Rob. And uh, we're wrapping up Crown Heads, unfortunately, today. Uh, what we wanted to do a little differently, instead of smoking all the same cigar, we kind of dove into the 2018 releases. Um, I'm smoking the La Creme 2018, the Bellicoso Fino. Mike, you're smoking? Uh, four Kicks. 2018 special edition. Uh, the Lancero and Baxter's got. I'm smoking the LC52. The Las Calaveras, 2018 Las Calaveras. Commonly known as LC52. Correct. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna kind of go through. We're pairing these with a couple of uh, Boulevard whiskey stouts today. Uh, we're each gonna talk a little bit about the cigars. Uh, you know, we've we've been enjoying Crown Heads more than. You know, it's been one of our favorites. A, a lot. It's kind of why we're least. all smoking different ones today. We so, don't want to stop it. Right. We're gonna we're gonna break these down. Talk a little bit about them. Talk about a lot of the the creativity that comes out of Crown Heads and everything that we found through them. And uh, we'll have some fun with it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna let Mike kick it off. Mike's gonna talk a little bit about that Lancero he's got going on. Um, that was the limited 2018 size that came out for Crown Heads. And as you know, with Lanceros, Lanceros are often sought after as a lot of some of the best cigars simply because of the type of tobacco that goes into a Lancero. Correct, and I'll dovetail into that a little bit. I like, first of all, this Lancero, it's a it's a Connecticut Habano wrapper, and it's got a Nicaraguan binder and filler. And I'll let Mark explain all that. But another misnomer in the cigar community, especially in the U.S., everybody thinks bigger is better. And with cigars, that's not necessarily always the case. I think the best sweet spot for a cigar is the Lancero size. And Mark, I want you to kind of explain why I feel that way and why a lot of times the smaller ring gauge and especially Lancero is considered the perfect cigar to smoke. Right, well when it comes to the Lancero, a lot of the reasoning behind it is you, you look at the size of the cigar itself, there's not a lot of room to add a bunch of tobacco into. So typically when you have a Lancero, you don't get a lot of the, the filler combinations, a lot of the extra binder leaves, a lot of the extra wrapper leaves. You get more of a solid build on the cigar itself. Um, you usually get a lot more higher priming when it comes to a Lancero, so you're going to get more value out of the leaf. Um, typically, you can take a Lancero that comes in multiple different sizes, and you can find the boldness of the cigar actually comes out more in the Lancero versus if you've got a, a Robusto, a Toro, a Bellicoso, or even a Robusto Grande, any, anything bigger than that. Um, and that's, that's primarily why a lot of people, if you're looking, you'll find a lot of cigars that are made to be real strong, real boastful in flavor. The actual d decided on size comes out to be that Lancero size. And the biggest point, I, I feel like it's worth reiterating for the people out in the audience is size doesn't matter in a case of a cigar. Throughout everything we've learned about bigger is better, because just like Mark mentioned, there's no filler tobacco in here. Whatever was designed by the roller to put in this cigar is the actual true tobacco, not true. that filler stuff. Everybody thinks a six by 60, a seven by 70, or an eight by 80 is really cool to smoke, but you're not getting what was originally designed to be in that cigar. Couldn't agree more. We're gonna come back to it. Smoke that for a little bit. We'll talk about some flavors when you're done. Got it. Uh, Baxter, dive into this uh, LC52 Calaveras you're enjoying, man. Well, I, actually, it's a very good cigar. It's very smooth. Uh, it's flavorful. Uh, it's the San Andreas wrapper with a Nicaraguan uh, uh, filler and the uh, binder. binder. And unfortunately, I have to disagree with Mike because I believe size matters, okay? Been talked that all my life, and this is good stuff. Okay, and it really is. You need to try it. It's awesome. Yeah, I can't. I can't argue with the Calaveras. So the La Creme 2018. This is the Bellicoso Fino. It's just the, the size. Only difference between the regular La Creme is the size in which that it came. Uh, it's got your Connecticut broadleaf wrapper, Ecuadorian Sumatran binder, and your Nicaraguan fillers. 
Uh, if you've had the La Carême, you know exactly how well the cigar is built, everything that comes into it. Like I said, we're going to ping around flavor talk here in a second. But when it, when it comes to a cigar size, since we're having this fun with this, and you know, we picked three different cigars size-wise for this episode, spe specifically because we had the option on the 2018 releases and the sizes. We're each smoking our favorite size cigar tonight. That's what we're doing. And when it comes to a Bellicoso, it's, it's my, my favorite size in any cigar. It doesn't matter if you cap it with a Widow's Peak Torpedo or if you give it the rounded Torpedo Top that you find on some cigars. Um, I, I thoroughly enjoy them, and this is what's going to make this a little more fun tonight versus some other times where we smoke the same cigar, do some of the same things, as we actually get to talk about when it comes to the flavors, the different things we're tasting based on size, complex, and other cigars we taste in the same way. So give us a second, we're going to come back, smoke these for just a little bit, and we're going to dive into what it is we're tasting. So we smoked in these cigars a little bit, we got some good taste going on and everything right now. Uh, we're going to start with Mike. Mike, with that, that four kicks Lancero, give us a little bit about what you're tasting, how you think about it, you know, let it go. Um, it's definitely full bodied for me. It's bold. Um, I taste a little spice, not an overpower pepper, but on the back end, it, it lingers in your mouth uh, as far as that spicy taste. Um, I know Crowned Heads names are cigars, funky names, but there's a reason. I'm assuming it's four kicks because of the bold flavor. Do you know the name Maybe behind it? Maybe there's a story behind it. We'll do that later. All right, I'll let you figure that out. But for me, it's a it, it, it's a great after for me an after dinner great meal cigar. Right. I I wouldn't do this one early in the day. For me, it's a little it's a little bold. Okay. Baxter, what are you thinking on that Calabash, uh, man? This is actually I, I taste a little bit of cocoa. I actually taste a little bit of almond, and I. This would be a great morning cigar, this particular one, okay, with a coffee, especially uh, some of that brew that you love, the Maui Maui Waui Waui stuff, okay, <laughs> but this uh, has a lot of flavor, but it's more of a, a subdued type flavor, it's not overpowering, it's just a very mild mid-range cigar right right um i agree with you on, on the calaveras but on the four kicks too they're they're both great cigars i think uh you know when it comes palate wise you know cigars change throughout the day things change in and out but uh, with the with the la Carême, um again like i said same size if you smoke the la Carême before you know what you're getting here um you get a nice mute little spice uh and, and when i say spice i use it a little differently than i usually use i don't i don't mean like a pepper or a burn or any, anything in that, in that kind of, I, I mean like a nice cooking spice that kind of settles down on your palate. Um, there's this neat little sweetness that comes off on the retro hail, but even then when I use the term sweetness, I'm going to talk a little more about like dried fruit sweetness. I don't mean it sugar plain wise or when I talk about that burnt sugar sometimes that you find in cigars. I don't mean it that way. Um, it finishes real clean. It's got a real mild smoke. It really does. It's not super creamy it's not real cloudy but it's it's a very comfortable smoke that encompasses your palate all the way around i mean it, it, it treats your palate real well when you let it off um depending on what you're drinking depending on what you're playing with it definitely gives you a nice array of flavors like a papaya but maybe no i'm serious yeah yeah no i'm, not, I'm it, with you it's yeah not it, sugary but it's sweet got that sweet right yeah definitely definitely it's got a uh you know, sometimes it's kind of hard to say sweet because then people think sugar and things like that. But it, it's got this it's got this real unique, like I said, almost dried fruit. You know, you dig a dried right. fruit and you eat a dried fruit. You can still pick up the natural sweetness of the fruit itself, but you're not floating around on that crystalline sugar that's on top of everything else. Um, it's, it's a real comfortable cigar. I mean, I would I would smoke this thing any time of the day. Um, it's not too bold and it's not too mild. It's just it's this nice, real medium cigar that you can do whatever you want with. Mark, what are the price ranges for these three cigars? So when we're for running, anybody when, interested, we're running through these. Each one of these these cigars settle between in our humidor here in Santino's and the MSRP settle anywhere between six eighty five and ten fifty a stick. Okay, you've got different size variations. You know, of course, when you you get something limited like twenty eighteen stuff. As boxes start to go away, they sell. Of course, prices prices will always kind of raise in a sense or the other. But comfortably right now, you can definitely say it sticks in that price range and it doesn't change. One of the things that I've loved the most about Crown Heads is the product they release is 
so good. It fits anyone, but it also all fits inside that price range that everyone can enjoy. None of it's too expensive and none of it's too cheap that you automatically write it off because it's not enough money. You know, there's, there's, it's easy to say any of these three crown heads, um, the Buckeye that we smoked, you know, the 2018 court before that, there's nothing that says anyone can't just sit down. All the prices in your range, sit down, there's something that's going to encompass all pallets. Everything is there for you. So, uh, Baxter, anything? You know, I, I said this was a great morning cigar, and it is. But be very honest with you, the pairing with the beer, actually, uh, it accents the experience. And you guys so drinking a stout right now? We're, I'm drinking a Boulevard uh, stout, actually. Whiskey barrel aged. Yeah, whiskey it barrel aged. It, it really is great. Uh, so the what we're drinking is the it's uh, from Boulevard Brewing. It is the whiskey barrel aged stout. That's great. Um, kind of fits along the lines of Dragon's Milk, the Bourbon County stuff, stuff like that. Uh, it's definitely a milder on the edge of those bourbon barrel aged things. But high but alcohol content. Yes. Correct. Yeah. I mean, they sit around 8.59, I think, for these. Um, but like like you said, with the, especially even with the La Carême, the the beer itself, because it's got that stoutiness to it, it's got that, you can taste some of the oak in it from the barrel aging. Right. It definitely, especially with the La Creme, it opens up those flavors you pick up on the so back end. So I have end. to quit coffee and drink this. Probably be morning. best. So we're going to smoke a little bit more of this. We're going to come back with our tri buyer than I, and we're unfortunately going to have to wrap up Crown Head Cigars. All right, everyone, it's time for that much anticipated tri buyer or deny portion of our show, and we're going to tell you why. Mark. So I'm going to start with the La Creme. Um, regardless of the 2018 in the Bellicosa, if you're a fan of it, if you can find it, definitely buy it. Uh, when it comes to the La Creme in itself, it's, it's a buy for me. Um, I've talked over the past couple episodes about buying, trying, forget all of it. If you can buy a crown head, get your hands on a crown head, smoke it. It's just going to carry you through the rest of their palate, and you're going you're gonna to enjoy everything from it. So if you take anything from me out of this show... Try Crown Head cigars. I don't. I don't think a single one's gonna let you down. Baxter, how about you? It's excellent cigar. It, it's very. I would. I'm probably a more uh, into a heavier smoke, but this is probably what I would consider a mid-range smoke. And I would say I would try it. I mean, this this is an awesome smoke. It really is. And and guys, I guess I got the full-bodied smoke here. So, like I said, I think this is a great. For me, after dinner, like a good dinner that you really enjoy and a good company, this is a cigar you smoke to cap off the evening. It's that simple. All right, guys, so that's a wrap on Crown Heads. Go down there, like, comment, subscribe for the show. Ding our bell for the notifications. What we got going on, you guys, like I said, like, comment. Uh, the most like comment that we get on the show, you're going to receive that week's cigar that we've reviewed. So, for example, this week on this show, you're actually going to receive one of each of these cigars if you have the most light comment. If you're local and of legal age here in the St. Louis area, make sure you come in, stop in, say you saw the show, you liked the show, you might just end up on the show this following Sunday. Come in and see us, hang out with us, let's make this thing grow, let's have some fun with it. You can be the pretty face that's next to me next time, okay? And I'm Mark. I'm Mike. I'm Rob. Remember, when choosing between a beautiful woman and a fine cigar, always choose the beautiful woman smoking the fine cigar. Baxter? Size matters. Cheers.